Oh! 
Brother, let's just take this song to the Lord in prayer. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Let's worship the Lord, let's exalt the Lord. Let us magnify Him, let's adore Him. Let us, we can rise up, we can rise up and begin to worship God. Let's, there is nothing we can give unto God at this time than to just magnify Him, than to just glorify Him, than to just say, Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, it will have been consumed. Yes, it will have been destroyed. Yes, it will have been completely forgotten by now. But if not for the love of God, if not for the mercy of God, if not for His grace, if not for His glory, let us magnify Him, let's exalt Him at this time. Let us glorify the name of the Lord. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Even for the for the fear situations, for the for the terrible conditions that we that actually came through your life, came through your way, came through the family, and yet here you are today. And yet here you are. You still have breath. You still have strength. You still have eyes. You still have legs. You still have mouth. You still have head. You can still comprehend yourself together. Oh Lord, we give you all the glory. Oh Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration, oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ for all, oh God. That we have passed through, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, some have passed through the fire. O oh Lord, some have passed through the waters. O oh Lord, some have passed through adverse, adverse conditions and circumstances. Heavenly Father, you've brought us through. You've made us, O oh Lord, to overcome and to, to, to be victorious over them all. Father, this morning we say, Thank you, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, as we come to the final, O oh Lord, to the climax of the service this day, Father, help us that we we'll remember. Help us that you will you, 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 be the uppermost in our heart all the way, all the time, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we know you've answered us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, let's just be seated. Let's be seated for a few minutes that we have before we uh, put, bring the, uh, the service to a close this morning. Brethren, looking at the life of Christ and what he passed through, which we at which we're discussing all over since the beginning of the service today, something will just begin to talk to me. That look at Christ. He had every reason to be completely disturbed and be worried over every, every, every step of the way. He knows the law. He knows his right. He knows everything that he, was, that he was going through. And yet, he was quiet. He was peaceful because the pastor, our pastor also made us to see because he knows the purpose for his calling. And until that is finished, he said, I am not going to back down. Whatever they do, whatever they go, until it is finished. And you will finish, you will finish strong in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, you will finish strong in Jesus' name. The battle for him was rage. The battle for him was very severe. He was, I mean, he could, he, before he got there, he went to get the money. And at Gethsemane, the Bible tells us that the drops of his body was coming out, the sweat of his body was coming out as blood. He actually slugged it out. He sweated out and on his way, and he got to a point he could no longer carry that cross. Somebody had to get there and help him to carry it. And where is the end? He was, to, he was heading on to Golgotha. And Golgotha, at that point, he was to be crucified for you and for me. That is why we have the grace, we have the pleasure to come around and give glory unto the Lord. That today, I know I am saved. You are born again if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. So today, I just want to share with us within this short time, this, 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 this word of God. I, I titled it, Peace in Worrisome Situation. Peace in Worrisome Situation. This also is a gift from God, but you have to tap into it. You will get it in the name of Jesus Christ. We have uh, the, the latest in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. I have also in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 to 4, verse 14 to, 20, verse 14 to 22. And also Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I will just read these two verses for us so that we continue from there. And in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. It was Jesus that initiated it. Everybody was there. They've done all they needed to do. He now said, now, sons, let me put it that way. He now said, disciples, let me put it that way. He said, let us cross over to the other way. Jesus has spoken. Nothing can cut it short. Amen. It cannot never be truncated. Whatever is happening, they will get up there. Because he has spoken, he went down to the deep. I mean, he went to, to the bottom of the ship and he did what? He slept. Let's see. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm in the wind. Of, in the wind. And the waves beat into the sea, into the ship, so that it was now full. And it was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. 
and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And saying to you today, whatever storm you're passing through, whatever wind that entered into your into, into the boat that you into your into the boat of your journey onto, onto Canaan. This morning I said by the Spirit of the Lord, peace be still. The, the, the salvation of the Lord is coming unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. And the wind sees, it must cease. Because the Lord, the creator of the wind, has spoken. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever thing that is there, the Lord God is speaking to you today. Maybe you just went through the pre period of storm, you are out. Maybe your own, you are on your way towards it. You will, when you get there, the peace and the glory of God will go with you in the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm trying to say in the nutshell is, when you have Jesus in that boat, when you have Christ joining with you, you have everything to gain. And you will gain it all in the name of Jesus Christ. It might rock. It might look as if everything is going to tumble. Jesus is there sleeping. You will not perish. Talk to yourself, I will not perish. I will not perish. But live to see the salvation of the Lord. And also, and he said, why are you so fearful? Look at Jesus Christ. He rebuked the wind. The wind ceased. He now turned to his own. Why are you so fearful? Brethren, what is causing fear in you? What is it? Think about it. You shouldn't be fear for nothing. For greater is he that is in me than they that is in the world. For greater is he that is in me than the fears that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than the turbulence that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than the wind that is rocking the boat. Greater is he that is speaking through me this morning to you that be still. Because you are a child of the living God. You can read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7 by yourself. We'll read it after. Here, I just make, I make emphasis on the word worry. We'll be talking about worry today. Most of the things that happen to us, we allow worry to make us not to pray. We allow worry to take over our emotion, our actions, and everything. And before you know what is happening, it now brings unto us pain. That event, Look at many, many things that are going around today. Even sicknesses that are happening, high blood pressure, we know by the time you have it, they, they, they said it's because of age and so on and so forth, but worry is a major contributor to it. Look at that child, that child is playing and running, and you are running after you screaming out the thump of your lungs, you will break your leg, it's not going to break his leg. If he didn't run, if he didn't shout, it will not, that leg is not going to be strengthened. So why are we careful for nothing? And the Lord is telling us today, don't let us be worryful, let's put our heart together. And in the journey of life, the Lord will go with us in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the Lord will go with us in Jesus' name. Let me quickly divide it, the first point. As Javier, caution and control in times of trouble. or in, I put there, in times of calamities, in times of problems and challenges. The reason is this. This is normal with us. Amen. When I say with us, every human being. Peter said it. He said, the same affliction that you are in right now. It is the same thing that your brethren that are in the world, they face the same thing. Hunger, as you are hungry, your friend that has stuck unbeliever, they have that pain. You earn the same the same wages. They, sometimes they might even earn more than more than you are. Yes, you realize that they still come to you. To, can you give me I O U against uh, next month? What? But you got this. You just you just got paid. Yeah, I just got paid. But you finish. He has finished his own. But what I'm trying to say is, with situation you are facing through, I am passing through it. You can walk and be tired. You can run and be weary. And yet, if you have God with you. They are normal with human beings. So you don't see it as something that is, that is different. Our Lord Jesus Christ literally tells us and he warned us and he reminded us that in this world there is not a single, pl a single place of peace. It is full of ups and downs. It's momentary now. It goes up. It's, it's like a wave and toss of the sea. And he said whatsoever thing we have in calamity, in war, in fighting and violence, he said in whatsoever situation we have, in John chapter 16 verse 33, he says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have what? Peace. If you are in Christ Jesus, you have the peace of the Lord. That settles it. That said what? It settles it because he said, for I have overcome the world. He did not only overcome, he overcame and gave you power to overcome. Don't let us 
fret and worry. The Lord will keep us true in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say that to tell us this, that when we worry, we are sinning. Amen. I will tell you why. When you worry, you are telling God, you are too small, my problem is too big. When you worry, you are telling God, the promise you've given to me, it cannot be fulfilled. You now see Satan, bigger, mightier, is, he, cannot, he can't do nothing. He cannot overturn the promise of God for me and for your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So I said it, that when we do that, we sin and God is not happy. And in Titus chapter 1 verse 15, when we do that, it displays lack of faith in the reality of God and in his ability to meet all our needs. What he calls God a liar. That's what somebody calls it. We put it that way. He said, when you worry, it means we're telling God that God, you are a liar. You cannot fulfill your promise. You cannot do what you promise. And he said, he doubts the ability of God. If he says God, in fact, he says God is dead. If you allow worry to consume you, but it will not consume you in the name of Jesus. That is why we're talking about it today. But that is a solution to this. I said there is an answer to this in the name of Jesus Christ. And because God knows what you are passing through now, you know what I'm talking about? You, you think, ah, I am moody, I'm, hung, I'm, I'm hungry, I am, I'm tired, I, I have depression. You don't have depression. Jesus knows about it. Amen. By the time we get to, 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 the, to the other, other part, you will see what you will do. When you realize who God is, who he is in you, you will discover that you are more than, victor, you are more than victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, he cares about your life. He cares about your life much more. His promises are yea and amen. A pastor retreat, some of them for, to us today when we were doing the review. The promises of God are there for you. He has promised you long life, you're going to get it. He has promised you good health, you're going to get it. He has promised you children, you're going to have it. He has promised you blessing, a lot of it, you will have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, it is every, everyone has one, one, one thing that makes us worry at a point in time. But what God is saying to me and to you is this, let us be careful. Let us, so that we not charge God, so that we not charge God wrongly. In all this, Job did not charge God. That takes me to the second part, content and condition of these calamities. These calamities had, there is a purpose for these calamities. Pastor mentioned some of it also. It is because you have a purpose, that is why these cha challenges are coming. And when these challenges come, yes, it comes with worry. And when you worry about it, it gets you depressed. It gets you completely immobilized. And when you are immobilized, you know what happened? You won't be able to pray. When you can't pray, there can't be, you, can, you can't claim the promise of God. When you can't claim the promise, you cannot see the victory. And that means that the devil has won. He has won the battle. But he will not win in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the Lord will give us strength. He will give us power. In times of weakness, in times of pain, in times when our guards are down, there will be something from within that will spear, that will, that will spur us up. It will ginger up and make us to jump up and we cry unto our God and he will answer us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 10, we can read that by yourself. We have read for, your, for us in Mark chapter 4 verse 35 to 41 before. The, in, in those verses, you saw all those things there. That it was a sudden thing. The story here is this. When they were to go, the Lord knew the right time to go. Amen. Even the, the disciples themselves, they were, they were fishermen. They knew the right time to pass through that time. Because that river, the river Jordan, is between mountains. It is normal. When, you know, when wind bottles around, that, around the mountains, it is normal to make the water to rise. They knew this. As well. But in the night, it's always and normally calmer. It's cooler. And the water is not is that no, they don't expect any toil, any turmoil. So they, they decide to go. Well, they don't expect it, but it happened. Amen. It now happened to the point that to the point that it almost wrecked their ship. Is that not what we pass through today? Look at that new job that promised you everything. And now you step in, in there, you discover that the work environment is not the kind of environment you actually like. You try to restructure yourself. You try to get there. Every step you go to, that man is there, standing like a monster. What are you going to do? Pray and bulldoze that monster out of your way because that is your portion in the name of Jesus. As against worrying, we take our place. We take charge of what we have. Think about this. 
you have a lot of promise, a lot of blessing that is that the Lord has promised you. And suddenly, suddenly, something just pop out. Your health could not carry you through. What do you want to do? You give in, you throw in the towel? No. Somebody said his mother was diagnosed with cancer. And that time, she, everybody is completely given up. Eventually, by herself, anytime she's doing anything, she forgot cancer, he keep remembering the promise of God. God, I will not die but live to proclaim the word of God. Anywhere he's going, he'll say, but Lord, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I will not die but live to proclaim the word of God. She said, they begin to say that over and over and over. As at the time I'm listening to this individual, he said, it's over 40 years now. The cancer is gone. Praise the Lord. The person is still alive. So what I'm saying is this. The devil cannot fulfill. He, he, he has no part in our destiny. Amen. He, 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 he has no way in our part except we give it to him. In fact, somebody put it this way. If you don't tell the devil what is going through you, he does not know. That is why he came to Eve, begin to poke, begin to poke. And that is why he went to God. In, in Job, that he went to God. He said, God, have you considered... Where are you coming from? I'm going to and fro all over the world, everywhere. It's not, it's, when he's with me, he's not with you. He's not, he's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. God has all this quality. So when he goes to God and says, have you considered my servant Job? Yes, I, I went there a couple of times. Have you not put an edge around him? That gives you courage and confidence. You may not see them that are edge of fire around you. There are power that keeps you. There is a force that is within you that, is, that surpasses all these other things we're talking about. Eventually, say, okay, his life, don't touch. Go and do whatever you want to do. All through, the Bible says, with all that challenges, Job did not charge God what? Foolishly. We will not be foolish in the name of Jesus Christ. I said we will not be foolish. Yes, calamities, this, 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 this stuff that make us worry, they can come, they will, they, most times they come suddenly. And you, will not, you don't even know. Suddenly, you just right there, just saw that, oh, my daughter, my son is having bad, uh, bad, uh, bad peers. Where do you get this from? I never see you go out, and on and on. Challenges of life. Oh, no. At that point, take your stand. Take your place in God. And do what? Begin to fire. When you fire, they will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. God will give us wisdom even to rise above our circumstances in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the storms will come in Job chapter 14, verse 1. It said, a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of what? Troubles. It is normal for every human being. You no, know, I've said that before. Number the, the next one, calamities can be very severe. It can be painful. It can be something that when you see, honestly, think about it. We call it accidents. You never plan for it. And once it happens, sometimes even the insurance cannot take care of it. They will tell you, no, you take this one and you continue this other one. So you have to have, they now have ARP, they have all this other. What we're talking about is this. When these calamities and challenges come, sometimes they can be very severe and life-threatening. At that point, still stand. You still stand in God and trust him. Calamities can be full of sorrow. In fact, they have not seen one that will not bring sorrow. When we call something calamity, when we call something trials, when we call something persecution. You can never be happy and passing through trial. It's not possible. That's why Jesus keep warning us. And yea, all that will live godly in this present world, and in Christ Jesus must do what? Suffer persecution. No, it's, it's, it is it's part of our call. It is part of the Como package. But when you are tried, when you are shaped, you come out refined as gold. Amen. Meaning, if, you are, if there are no trials, you cannot be sharpened. Meaning, if there are no challenges, you will not stand tall. Meaning, if there are no challenges, your testament will not come out. You know what I mean? I said we have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament. You also have a testament that you carry about. That is your testimony. There can be testimony if there are no trials. There can be testimony if there are no temptations. There can be te 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 testimonies. If you will not stand through with God and get your own victory in the name of Jesus, we'll have it in Jesus' name. Some people, their calamity is sinful habit. And that is why Jesus Christ has come. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are of heavy laden. I will give you the evil, I mean, I mean sinful habits. Today they are there, tomorrow they are there. In, in, in Romans chapter 7, 
Paul the apostle said, he said, the things I wish I could not do, I, that is what I find myself doing. That is the calamity that is in the life of so many, some people. And this is to what in verse 25 of that same chapter, he said, Lord, I thank you, O God, for you have delivered me from this body of sin. At the point of salvation, you'll be free. Tell somebody you are free. I said, tell somebody you'll be free. In the name of Jesus, the freedom of the Lord will come unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Sin cannot have, will no longer have dominion over you. I said, you will no longer have pleasure, appetite for civil habits. You want to steal, you want to defraud. It will, not be, it will not be something pleasurable to you. And the Lord will take you there in the name of Jesus Christ. Calamities also have source. It has a root. Because the devil knows your purpose. He knows your destiny. He knows where you are going. He will not begin to do everything to stall them. The disciples, the Lord told them to go to the other side. He bring that thing out so that I want to destroy all of them so that they not get there. <laughs> he can't do it. He will fail because the Prince of Peace is still in Naka. Many, many things. Apostle also tell us, reminded us that Paul and Silas, yes, we said they were there in prison because they, because they are preaching the gospel. It is deeper than that. We were made to know that they got to the prison because God knows that the jailer and his house are doing what? They are going to be saved. And that's the purpose and the mission of the Lord. Once that man got saved, what happened? They were freed. They were set free. The trial and temptation are for a short while. When they come, it will be a momentary thing. And when the purpose is fulfilled, you will know it and you will be free in the name of Jesus. So you can't quit in between. You cannot stop your journey halfway. You will finish strong and you will end it right in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, we also, also, many, we will fight through all this. I mean that it has a source. The source of it can be natural. The source of it can be God sent. And sometimes, I only said sometimes, but most times, this is what we put it to. It might be satanic. Praise the Lord. Remember, I said something. The devil has no room in this. If you don't give it to him, he cannot come into it. Amen. So, that's why I just said sometimes. Look at it. It's three, three things I said there. Number one, it can be natural. The wind normally blows. But when it blew, if you don't put your heart properly, it will blow it off. It is not devil that is doing that. You didn't fasten it right. You are driving, you are on a highway. The speed limit there is 65. And you are touring at 120. Okay. When you are supposed to stop, suddenly you could not do it. And your car swerved and find yourself somewhere. The devil has done that. Mm -mm. It's not devil. You caused that. Praise the Lord. Or you running through, you saw that yellow light and it pop out. No, I can still make it. Vroom, while you get that red, boom, the other one is coming. Crash. Now the hand is broken. The leg is broken. The ribs are broken. I got 27 stitches and so on and so forth. That is not devil. You caused it. Now, let's now flip it over. Everything is over. You are that red light, you stayed. And somebody is now coming behind you. Maybe he's busy with the text or what. Even if I even concentrating, he just come right there, blow you from the back, and run you over the red light. Another one come over, broom, crush your car. What will you cause that? What will you say is that? You fill in the gap. <laughs> but all I know is this. <laughs> all I know is this. The devil has no way in your life. As every situation, the Lord will take charge of us in the name of Jesus Christ. So what I mean is this. It has three, it might be three in origin. And sometimes, some of these faults, I said it, I specifically said it, it, it our fault, we do something that is not necessary. And sometimes God is telling us to do something. You're telling God, no, I'm not going there. Jonah, rise up, go to Nineveh. Why should I go to Nineveh? I ain't going to know Nineveh. Okay. Whether you go or you don't want to go, you will still go to Nineveh. But he went to Nineveh in the belly of a fish. Can you imagine how hot that place would be? And how did he even survive that journey? If not, God for God, if not for God. I believe God would have made the belly of that fish to, to have AC in it. He would not feed it at all. In fact, he would thought he was dead. And behold, he got that, the fish spew him out. Now, Jonah, what do you want to do now? Okay, I will go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because of what? 120 people. 
in that nation Nineveh become converted because he made up and do what the Lord want him to do. He just go about telling them, in this time, if you don't repent, Nineveh will be destroyed. And people, including the king of that country, the country, the Bible called that, the, that, that, that nation a great nation, 120,000 people. How many people do we have in our Laurel here, Laurel region? Here, we are less than 100,000. And yet, there are great people here. That's why we are here. There might be persecution, there might be trials. We might look for a, we might look for a place of worship for so many years. They might, they might put a sign there that if anybody enter into our room, we can see them. They are tempting us. But they've forgotten that our God is not dead. God is not dead. He's alive. He has seen not true. In the name of Jesus, we will be there in the name of Jesus Christ. And Psalms can be what we call by ourselves. And also, it's come, it, it, is, it might be something that God allows so that it teaches us some deep lesson, so that we come closer to him. And of course, sometimes it might be satanic. Whether satanic, natural, or what God is saying, if you let the glory of God reign, when you are in times of uh, trials and tribulation, if you do not allow worry to take over you, you will diagnose properly what is the cause of this, and you will grow thereby in the name of Jesus Christ. Job, we can say a lot of things about Job, but my thinking is this. When the first, when the first report came, <laughs> can this thing be real? The second report came. <laughs> I think as a believer today, what Job should have done is this. If you like take that burden and take that challenge to the Lord, he shouldn't have waited till the end before he started communicating with God. He just goes straight and tell God. If it is natural, if God has allowed it, you still have access to him. The Lord will tell you, I am in charge with this. In charge with all this. But something that happened, the Bible says he did not charge God negatively. And at the end of the day, he lost, all, in fact, he lost everything. And God gave him ten times over. The Bible says... In the last chapter 42 of Job, he said his children are more beautiful <laughs> than all the children of the land. Meaning that that man must have lived a long, long, long years. Amen. When everything was lost and he went through all those tribulations, and now he now come around again, have another beautiful wife, another beautiful children. How many children say that? About 10 of them, right? Beautiful daughters and handsome boys. And all of them like that, and grandchildren. Trials are only momentary. You will, be, you, will, you will fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. And the reason for this is the purpose of, the other purpose is you want to, to doubt the God, the care of God concerning your life. It is going to God, challenge God. God cares not that we perish. He cares. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He cares, and he is doing the same thing right now in this situation that you are in now. Maybe your heart is troubled. You are, so, you are now at a crossroad. You don't know what to do, either to move forward or to remain or to go back. Ask God. He is in that situation. He will see you through in Jesus' name. Even though you might not see it now, don't question his concern. He, is, he really cares. He cares and he cares. And he, is, he cares. And also, he wants us to challenge his commitment to us. He has told us that we will not perish. Go. Let's go to the other land. We will go in there. And when you get there, we go to inherit it in the name of Jesus Christ. He cares. He's committed to everything that has come out of his mouth. Has he promised you blessing? Your blessing will not leave you. I said, has he promised you prosperity? It is coming. Yeah. Has he promised you children? It is coming. Yeah. Has he promised you health? You have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Just look at it. He promised Abraham. Each time I remember some of these things, like Abraham. He promised Abraham you will be father of many nations. And at the age of 90, that man is struggling for no child until the miracle happens. When the miracle happened, it now continued. Do you know that thing continued? Isaac was barren. Rebekah was barren for a minute. And it continued and continued. Look at Jacob, the wife that he lost so much and barren for some time and just continued. In all those trials and tribulations, they did not charge God. 
the purpose and the will and the might of God still fulfilled. Thank God I'm a child of God. Thank God we are Father Abraham's children. It's a fulfillment of promise. What has God told you about your son? What has God told you about your daughter? What has God told you about yourself? It is coming to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. So that will lead me to the last one. There is a counsel for you during calamities and promises and, 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 and problems. What are these counsel? When there are crises and storms, there are also wisdom and lessons to learn. See, brethren, I will have approached this by the grace of God in different dimensions. But the Lord is just saying, this is what I want you to see. When these things are coming, they will come. And you are my son, you are my daughter. What should be your attitude? How, should you, how will you handle it? And that is what I'm talking about here. Number one, you should know the power of the Lord. Anytime it comes, you say, well, I know this is one of those situations. But I know that my Redeemer lived. He is ever there. His power never fails. His power is never touching. It's not possible. When you remember the power of the Lord, what he did in the past, what he's doing now, what he's still going to do in the future, come on, rest assured, he's going to see you through in the name of Jesus Christ. Trials will normal and naturally come, but God, I know you are powerful more than this. The more you see God big, the smaller the problem. You know, when we go in the airplane and the, the plane wants to start and it going like that and once he put his nose up and it's going we now start seeing stuff in the in the ground small small i mean to be little and little and little if you eventually get to the altitude that is going about twenty thousand feet above sea level you can't even see what is on the ground anymore am i right that is how god is when you carry your god anywhere you are you are right there with god in heaven when you pray what do you do you look up in heaven god is there by the Spirit of God, go and translate yourself with God. Stay right there with Jesus Christ. In fact, that is what the Bible says. For I am seated with Christ and is seated with God. Am I right? We are right there above sea level. Those problems are here. We are not taking them with us. Amen. And I pray the Lord will give us grace to see the power of our Lord all the time. We can read in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. He said, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power. Somebody say, all power. All power, all power. I feel like speaking in tongue here. Speak it in my dialect. Praise the Lord. All power, all power belongs to the Lord. Think about it. The one under the air, the one on the air, the one in the sky, all power belongs to the Lord. And when you remember that, you have it. Number two, the promises of the Lord. Pastor gave us only three here yesterday, I mean this morning. There are in fact, the whole Bible is a promise sent from God. Don't add to it, don't deduct from it. Go in there, there is one that's attached to that promise. Amen. You remember the promises of God. They are yea and they are amen. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, and by two immutable things, two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. Has he spoken it? It will come to pass. Praise the Lord. It was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. He will not back away from any promise he has made for you. He has made in his word. And for us as a church, it's not going to renounce. The only thing, the only condition that make God to turn around is when we go into sin. And we're not going to sin. I said, we will not sin against God in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember his promises. Remember his presence. I just told you now. When you have the presence of God, you, you become conscious of it all the time. No, I can't. Others may, I cannot do it because I am carrying the presence. We used to sing a song in the, uh, in, in, uh, with DLSO at that time. You know, we, we said, Satan, be careful because I am a bulldozer. Because I don't have break because the fire of the Holy Ghost is on me. Once he comes in upon the head of the enemy, what do you do? You bulldoze him out. Amen. <laughs> I know do less of that time. We are full of fire. Amen. We are still full of fire now. Satan, I know get break. I be bulldozer. He will bulldoze it right there and the enemy will go. And the Lord was helping us. In the name of Jesus, the presence of God is in you. I read something when I was preparing this also. They said there was this, uh, this pilot. 
and um, he was the lead pilot want to try and going going uh going on a going on a mission he has the the, the the crew and everybody was there and the pilot the, the, the plane was full and suddenly he now heard that there was like uh a rodent like uh a rat somewhere in the engine the man was seriously disturbed that this thing is going to eat something up in the engine of this thing and all of us are going to crash what's going to happen but it was just struggling with it. It was already on the air. It's just, so it just began just going there. Somebody now told him, what is, why are you afraid? What is the problem with you? This thing cannot go beyond a certain altitude. Once you get to as much as that, it's going to naturally die. That is the road in itself. It's going to die. It cannot, it's like, that is, that is, that is the level that it can survive. And after, it cannot do nothing again. Okay? So, when that thought comes to him, he now just moved up a little bit to the losses in which he are, yeah, and suddenly he just saw that the noise was going down and going down and going down, and he just continued his journey. And by the time he got to where he went there, and that, he, saw, he saw the rat dead somewhere. I said, Why are we afraid? Because we carry the presence of God. The enemy cannot go with us up here because we are there with him all the time in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, the devil knows your purpose and that purpose that God has given to you it will not be it will be fulfilled in Jesus name know the purpose of the Lord when you know the purpose of the Lord you will can easily diagnose the fault of the devil and you will stand through and you will stand tall in Mark chapter 6 verse 14 there are the disciples are in another storm again they they, are, they become to be afraid they these are the people that have seen Jesus did so many miracles in, in, in from in chapter chapter one and chapter two of Mark, and yet at this point, ordinary wind, and Jesus is even right there with them physically, and they were afraid. Remember the purpose of God. What is promised you, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Know the peace of the Lord. You are a child of God. The peace of the Lord is abiding in you. Know also the person of the Lord. God's personality is he loves. God's personality is fulfilling. God's personality, he will never leave you. He is it's not man. He's not tired. He's not weary. You see, where God has ever been since the day you are born, he did not change. His birth is not, it's not hot. He's just there. Praise the Lord. And you will pass. Your children also will leave. They will pass and they will continue. God will not stand. He will not change. He will not rock. He will not, he's, he's not tired. Praise the Lord. It's not human like I am that that I can be tired when I run and do all that. So what I'm, I said that to tell us that when you know the person of God, you know whatever he is now, so he is, I mean, so whatever he is now, so he was, and so he will be. He never changes. Time does not change. Then when you now have all this, you now apply the promises of God. It's one thing to know. It's another thing to apply. When you have the word, we say the application of knowledge is what? Wisdom. That is where wisdom comes in here. You need to apply the wisdom of God so that you will be successful. Remember, what we're talking about is peace in times of calamities or in times of crisis. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, he says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. We have the promise, and we are, there we are promised of peace. And the, the, the best way to interpret this peace is the peace that gives you tranquility. I was talking with somebody yesterday about peace. When the peace of God enters into your heart about a particular thing, the whole world might be crumbling and completely shattered. Even if that thing is not happening, you would know that, well, it doesn't matter. I, would, I don't care. This one will go. You, it's not even you that is saying it. It is just settled within you. That is what we, we call this, that kind of peace, a peace that is like tranquility of the soul. This kind of peace, it passes your own, even your understanding because it seals and it settles. And in John chapter 14, verse 27, we say, peace I live with you. It is a peace that is divine in origin. It is a peace that cannot be disrupted. It is a peace that disturbances and difficulties of life did not even, did not even have a scratch on. And that is the kind of peace that God and his will is given to you. And brethren, when you've tried all this, you've tried all this, and the trials and the calamities still persist and still there. You know what in verse 6 says? And when all else fails, try thanksgiving and what? And praise. I have never seen it fail. I said I have never seen that fail. When you advance the kingdom of God, 
against the kingdom of darkness in praises and in 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 in, 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 in praises and in thanksgiving brethren they will succumb your worry will fiddle out i said your worry will go and it will not come back in the name of jesus right summary in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 22 and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment the lord will set ambushment against your enemies the lord will set ambushment against your trial the lord will set ambushment against your worry the lord will set ambushment against anything that disturbs you in the name of jesus right look at what happened and against the children of ammon put anything that is stopping you there is is a name against the children of moab is a name against monsea their names which were come against judah and they were smitten amen and they were smitten they will be smitten in the name of jesus right i said they will be smitten in jesus name so when trials affliction comes do not worry be calm amen when you are faced with a challenging time do not worry be calm stand in courage be courageous call on him control yourself conquer with christ that will be your lot in the name of jesus Christ. i don't know what you are passing through now the kind of storm you're passing through i don't know how you're feeling right now it might be a storm of suffering it might be it can be something that is giving you pain but what I know is this, Jesus will ease it. Yeah. It is a storm. It may be it's a storm of sorrow. All I know is this, he will comfort your soul. Yeah. It may be a storm of sin. What I know is he will deliver you and he will set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. He will set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He, sets you, he sets me free. He sets me free. Oh, oh, he, he says me. Let's just bow down our heads and tell the Lord, I'm promising, Lord, I know your freedom is with me. I know your freedom I have. I know, Lord, the worries of the world, the worries of this life, Lord. I completely turn them out. I turn them away from my life in the name of Jesus Christ. You just learn it. Just see it. That we, when, there are, when, when opportunity arises for us to worry, remember his promise. Remember to pray. Remember to be calm. Don't, don't, bother, don't bother yourself about too many of these. Yes, they come. They can be challenging. Yes, they come. They can be troublous. Yes, they come. They can be things that will actually shake us to the root. It will shake you to your bone. It will shake you, it will shake you to your foundation. Yes, 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 yes. Remember the promise of God. Remember the brethren of God. Remember the people that are around you. Just remember. Remember the word of God. Remember to praise. Remember the peace of God. Remember the purpose of God. Remember the plan and the purpose of God for your life. And begin to pray and begin to tell you, Lord, here am I. I give my all to you. Lord, here am I. I give my will to you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will help you in the name of Jesus. Why not tell the Lord? Why not tell the Lord? Oh, yes. I know that this trial and this affliction is both for a short time. I know that this trial and this affliction is for a momentary thing. I know that your purpose of my life is going to be fulfilled. I know that your purpose for my life is going to be accomplished. I know that your purpose for my life is going to be realized. Oh yes, the enemy has no room into this. He has no power at all in this. He has no authority over this. He has nothing to do with my father even in this. Oh Lord, I am praying and asking the Lord that the victory, your victory I have. Oh Lord, that the victory, your victory I am hearing. Oh Lord, your victory I got in the name of Jesus. Why not begin to tell the Lord? Why not begin to ask God and tell the Lord right now, right now, tell the Lord. If there is anything that maybe your own calamity is the calamity of sin, you cannot but sin. Lies is over your mouth. You cannot but sin. Immorality is risen over you. You cannot but sin. You tell lies. You, you, you defraud. Your hand is filled with blood. Why not tell the Lord about it? The Lord will deliver you. will forgive you. Yes, he had the power. He will give it to you. He will give, forgive you completely and totally. The, he will talk to you. You will be totally free. And you will be completely free. Maybe there are challenges at the, your, your place of war. Maybe there are challenges in your family. Maybe there are challenges in your body. And yet the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will set you free. He will set you free in the name of Jesus Christ from worry. He will set you free in the name of Jesus from trials. He will set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. And when they come, he will give you power. 
He will give you strength. He will help you that you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Let's commit ourselves and commit it to the hand of the Lord. 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 And the Lord God, the Lord God of heaven, he will help. He will assist. He will make, he will make a way out for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You will.